A billionaire couple summons a group of some of the most accomplished people in the world to a secretive summit in the mountains. The guest list includes business people, trailblazers, artists, and a 24-year-old amateur detective turned author. But when death strikes that retreat, she has to jump into action in a murder at the end of the world. When they're trapped at the end of the world, you have to make this life livable. There's no going back. Welcome. It's so exciting to see you all here. No escape. Joining me now is director and actor Britt Marling. Britt, so good to see you. Thanks for the conversation. Excited to talk about this new uh, work. You've worked with your longtime collaborator, Zalbat Manglitch. I'm wondering, you guys have worked together for so long. How did the idea come up for this particular plot? Because it is twisty. It is twisty indeed. <laughs> you know, I think we were just really interested in the idea of doing a kind of Agatha Christie style whodunit. Um, we did some research on the whodunit, and it turned out it came into popularity between the First and the Second World War, which was, I think, another time when we were all kind of looking around and being like, who done it? How did we get here? Um, so it felt like it was a ripe time for reinvention by putting, you know, a, a modern, young, female amateur sleuth at the center of that story. Even before we know what's happening, there was always there's a suspense. I mean, we just showed a part part of the trailer to our viewers, and you can see it. Um, how do you keep that momentum rising through the episodes? You know, it's funny. We've been doing this for a while now, and one of the pleasures we get out of storytelling is sometimes braiding genres. So, a murder at the end of the world is in part, you know, a whodunit and a story of an amateur sleuth who gets invited to a retreat, has to unravel this mystery. But it's also a love story and a story of Darby Hart's coming of age as a detective. These stories are braided together. You know, the cold murder mystery in Iceland, and then a story that's actually a love story across the American West. Um, and I think that that allows us to kind of keep upping the tension with it, with every episode, because you just kind of don't know what's going to happen in either storyline and then how they'll braid together in the end. Let's talk about Darby for a second, because I, f I find this so fascinating, especially with the, the op-ed you wrote years ago about the strength of female characters and how that was seen by some people, almost like you don't want to play a, a strong female lead, but that wasn't really what you were saying. And I'm wondering if you prove that with Darby and, 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 and the way she is. So it's so lovely of you to bring that up. Yeah, I, mean, I think I wrote that op-ed from the perspective of feeling like we were kind of attempting in Hollywood to do strong female characters, but often our version of that was just you know, the assassin is now played by a woman and it's now just a woman, you know, wielding the guns and, and killing people, which is a version of strength, but right. I think is missing some of the qualities that women often bring that are softer, but also strong, like their empathy or their capacity for, for listening or, um, and so it was nice to try to create a character in Darby that brought some of those qualities to the table. You know, yes, she's courageous, but it doesn't mean she's without fear. Yeah, it's super thoughtful in, in character development, and empathy can definitely be a superpower. Um, yeah. you, are, you are well known for playing leading roles in your projects while you co-produce them, screenwriting. This time, you're directing in a supporting role. I'm wondering how different the creative process is. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I've been wanting to direct for a while, and I think because of the nature of the worlds we build, they're they're so ambitious, and they have so many characters in it, and it's often sort of near sci-fi, and there's huge sets that have to be built, and big VFX sequences, and so it just felt like in order to really direct in the way I wanted to, I had to take a step back from acting and give myself the space to do it. So I was happy to play a supporting role in this and really carve out the time to direct and sort of take the way I had imagined things on the page all the way to the to the screen and to have it be realized in the way that I had I had first imagined. It was an incredible part of the process for me. Brett, thanks so much for joining us. The first four episodes of Murder at the End of the World are now streaming on Hulu. New episodes are released on Tuesday. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.